What's the most out of touch thing you've heard a person say? Story 1. I don't understand why you bother renting an apartment. Just buy a house. My dad, who hasn't purchased a house since 1993. My advice to my younger colleagues is to buy a house in the year 2000, like I did. They don't seem to appreciate it. Kids these days. I bought my house in 2016 in western Pennsylvania before housing prices started skyrocketing here. My house has a 60% increase in value in those six years. If I sold, I'd get more money back than what I paid in mortgage payments the last six years. Even more absurd, per Zillow, my house has increased in value $6,500 plus in the last 30 days. Why do you keep taking these low-paying jobs? My parents, who think I work horribly crappy jobs for fun. But you have a degree! In English, guys, I'm a moron and things are not how they used to be. I have a friend I've known for almost my whole life who went to work as a mechanic at a pretty nice company where I am. He quit after two and a half years because he hated it, the chemicals, fumes, and conditions were affecting his overall health. I remember his parents giving him crap over it because it was a nice job with decent benefits and he made more money than most people in the rural area. He ended up taking a job working for the state, where he cuts trees down along the roadways out of state highways and roads, making less than a third of his prior income, which sees him outside almost all hours of the day. He loves it, even during winter when it's cold as balls and the only heat comes from the interior of the vehicle they drive around. But he gets sunlight, fresh air, and he gets to work at a relatively even pace and barely gets any grief from management slash supervisors. My mom said something similar, like I'd be throwing my money away by renting an apartment or a house for the rest of my life. Like I'm already doing that with how unnecessarily expensive everything is. Now I'm expected to buy a $30,000 house for $500,000. Yeah, if you don't want to live in a small town, you're going to pay an arm and a leg for a house. What's worse, with rising housing costs, rental prices go up too, making it all the harder for people renting places to save up for a down payment on a house. I remember looking for an apartment when I had a job that paid around $45,000 a year. Not amazing, but not awful. I could barely afford a studio in the area. Story 2. My dad just died about a month ago. My company gave me four days unpaid off. I was really close to my father, so this was hard for me to deal with. My paycheck was enough to pay bills, but I had to buy my groceries on credit card to get by. My boss's brother-in-law died the following week. All he talks about is how hard this is on his wife. Between the stress of her brother dying and the Reno on their million-dollar cabin, he's taking his whole family to Hawaii for 10 days this month to try and deal with their grief. Meanwhile, I'm pricing urns out on Amazon to try to save money, trying to sell my dad's tools to help my mom, working full-time, and taking care of a toddler. It didn't happen to me personally, but I've got an extremely similar story. I used to work with an extremely competent and really nice supervisor, we'll call her Sally, who didn't show up for work one day. Our boss Matt, who was also the owner, wanted to terminate Sally immediately until it came out that her husband died in a really violent freak accident. Cooler heads prevail. Matt backs off as I tell him that I can cover for Sally for as long as she needs. About two weeks pass, and in spite of Sally checking in every so often and being in the bereavement guidelines, Matt starts interrogating people, asking when Sally's returning, complaining that her coming in to collect a paycheck Side story, Matt didn't believe in direct deposit, was really unprofessional given how long she'd been gone. He even starts quietly asking people how it would look if he went ahead and replaced Sally. Long story short, Sally ended up returning like immediately after the funeral was concluded. In my opinion, Matt indirectly pressured her to return. Three months later, Matt's dog died. Don't get me wrong, he was a gentle, adorable English bulldog that Matt would bring every so often but he was also old and extremely sick, and Matt had about six months warning that his dog would pass away. Matt was utterly devastated, like ashes and sackcloth forlorn. Not only does he completely fall off the radar for a month, but he only resurfaced to have a meeting where he explains that he was headed to Hawaii to recenter, and I crap you not, looks Sally dead in the eyes and tells her that she should understand. I'm so sorry for your loss. Hang in there. Also, your boss is a D. Thank you. I just thought it was crazy that the staff I work with here went together, got me a sympathy card and a $175 gas card so I would have money to go see my mom. My boss didn't even get me a card. I've been here for 14 years. My dad is a customer here. He bought his truck and did his service work here. 
I hate companies like that because they expect you to make your job a super important part of your life while simultaneously not caring about your life. But the places that actually treat you like they care and give people a ton of leeway, I've worked to those places and they have some of the hardest working employees I've seen. Story three, anytime someone says, why did they throw that away? It could have been donated to a homeless person when referring to extremely expired or broken items. While cleaning out my parents' house before they moved, I emptied their fridge and pantry and separated out the expired stuff. My dad went through and gathered most of the food into a donation box and then scooped in all the expired food as well. Some of this stuff was years expired and even opened. My partner and I kept trying to remove it and eventually it came down to an argument where my dad insisted that the homeless would take whatever they could get. My dad had never had the experience of going hungry while my partner had volunteered at food banks in the past. He was peed that my dad was treating homeless people as less than human and insisting they should be grateful to eat his garbage. Once my parents had left, I donated the expired food to the garbage can. If my dad was so concerned about wasting it, he should have either used it or donated it years ago when it was still safe to eat. I briefly went hungry for a few months after escaping domestic violence, I have a job and eat well now, and I definitely threw out expired food. Can't risk getting sick while poor with the way the U.S. healthcare system is. When I used to help a charity, we'd get people donating literal rags, torn t-shirts, and ruined trousers for the homeless saying, it's good for somebody. No, no it's not. These are worse than the clothes they are currently wearing. Why do some people think homeless people want junk? Don't they deserve something nice? I was sorting cans at the food pantry when someone donated about half a case of cheese bait in jars. If you're unfamiliar, it's a stinky cheese-like substance used primarily, IME, to catch catfish. This particular bait was obviously a decade or more old. The person working donations refused it because it isn't food. But you could sell it, that stuff's expensive, protested the donor. Yeah, we'll just run that down to our vintage bait stand and wait for the cash to roll in. It isn't like running this food pantry takes any time or effort. And folks, honestly, if you want to help out a food shelf, donate some cash. They can use that to buy what they need instead of getting the 500th can of creamed corn you didn't want to eat because that crap sucks. But hey, donate what you can, and if you have non-perishables, every bit helps. Story 4. Why are you still living at home at 23? Just buy a house. Coming from someone whose parents bought her a house. Have a friend whose wealthy parents paid for his schooling, his rent, his startup, his car, and his down payment. He asked when we were finally going to buy a house because renting is such a waste of money. My brother had half of his house paid for by his father-in-law. He kept telling that the house I'm looking at were too small and that I needed bigger to grow into, and I finally had to snap at him that I'm a single income and nobody is giving me a 50% down payment. Some people are just oblivious. My son is 26. He lives at home. He'd have to work approximately 3.5 full-time jobs to afford a house in this absurd market. Hell, I couldn't afford the house I live in now in this market. My house is currently valued at over twice what my mortgage is for, but if I sold it, I couldn't afford to. I'm 30 and living back at home for a year, finally going to be moving out with four friends so we can afford renting a house. One of us is an engineer and I work in IT and we can't really afford places on our own. Story 5. I don't know why you would go to a community college when you can go to a university, said by a high school guidance counselor giving a lecture on college admissions essays and applications in my senior AP English class after I asked naively if there's anything I had to do for community college. Turns out I had other classmates in the same boat who wanted to know too but felt too embarrassed to ask. Anyway, I went to community college to get my prerequisites out of the way and got my associate's degree, then transferred into university for a competitive nursing program. I saved money from those first two years in community college, didn't get a loan until I got into uni. F that guidance counselor. Such bad advice. I went to a school in a wealthy area and the guidance counselor would tell us to go to community college, get straight A's, and an automatic acceptance into the local Ivy League school. If you can get the grades, it really is the best call financially. That's my plan currently, partly for the above, it's cheaper for when I want to go to a four-year, but also because I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to go down the education route. And I don't want to get into an expensive college just to drop out with debt. As someone that went to an expensive college for education and dropped out and is still dealing with that debt, can I just say, good choice. Folks, don't feel pressured into college. 
pursue it if what you want to do in life requires college. If you aren't sure what you want to do, two years of community college is a great option to learn about stuff, get an associate's degree to help with job opportunities, and all that jazz. Story 6. To preface for all the people trying to give me mortgage advice from the U.S., I live in Canada and our mortgage rules are extremely different. Thank you for the suggestions, but you cannot expect your home buying methods to work in a different country. Me conversing with a patient about the housing market when I was like 22. Me. Houses are so expensive it's going to be difficult to get into the market in a few years. This was some years ago. Patient whose husband inherited a lot of money and a business and now they're wealthy is F. Rent is the same as mortgage, though. Me. It's the down payment we need. Patient, why don't you just get your parents to give you the down payment? That's what ours did, and we paid them back. Me. My dad is dead, and my mom has a rare illness that placed her on long-term disability. Patient. Well, me. Not everybody has the same opportunities in life. Patient. Hmm. Story 7. A year ago, we were putting offers on houses, and our budget was low compared to what was available, and the realtor would ask, well, can't your parents help pitch in? LOL. What makes me think a lot of people are lucky enough for their parents to help with the home buying process, but yeah, not us. Going through that now, everyone in that industry thinks we could get a gift. B. Even if they died, I wouldn't get anything for my parents. Sorry, it's frustrating. Ugh, this crap right here. I took my car in to get an oil change, and at the end, usually, they give you a list of improvements. The guy, 40, 50's clerk, explained things to me, 25 female at the time, very condescendingly like I didn't know what brakes were. And at the end said, maybe this is something your mommy and daddy can help with. I just death glared at him and said, I don't have parents, and walked out. Story 8. I attend a typical rich kid's high school as one of the non-rich kids, at least at the standards of the environment I was in, my family was solidly middle class. The amount of asinine, delusional crap I heard on the daily made my skin crawl sometimes. When my ex-friend turned 16, her parents gave her one of their beamers. The thing was maybe five years old. She nonstop complained at the fact her parents had the audacity to give her a used car instead of buying her the new Audi she wanted. One day she was on another diatribe about how much her parents sucked for giving her a hand-me-down car, and I snapped and told her that she should be grateful her parents had the mean to give her her own car in the first place, let alone a luxury vehicle. Her response? Well, it isn't my problem your parents don't work hard enough. I was a peasant who shared one of my parents' cars and took the bus. Sarcasm. Honestly, I feel at least a little bad for rich kids. They're raised with such a skewed idea of value, and it really will make it hard to connect with others. There's a good chance they'll get to coast through life, so I don't feel that bad, but I can't blame them either. They were born into that crap. Story 9. He told me as long as you're dating someone better looking than you, you're going to have to get used to me being hit on or having something on the side. You're going to have to date an ugly guy for that loyalty crap. Of all the insanity of this quote, the thing that gets me is the casual equating of something that cannot be controlled, me being hit on, with the opposite, me having someone on the side. It's like, look, as long as we live in an area with a lot of flowers, sometimes I'm going to get allergies or murder people. I mean, someone has to push up the daisies. Love it when toxic people tell you that you have to get used to or deal with their toxicity. Not deal with, but have the privilege of the toxicity. Narcissists don't see it as toxic. You are graced with their presence and lucky to have them in your life. Story 10. I grew up super poor, like going days without eating kind of poor, all because my mom legit thought welfare was only for unwed black mothers. She never called anybody to confirm that, never asked around. She wouldn't apply for reduced school lunches either because that was ghetto. Imagine being so racist and buying into the welfare queen lie so hard that you let your own children starve. I am so, so sorry. My family was very poor and we weren't on welfare for long stretches of time because my mom would mess up the paperwork. But the difference between when we were not and when we were was vast. The struggle to have lunch food or scrape up change to buy lunch versus giving a code and sitting down with a meal? Vast. You and your siblings deserved assistance. Story 11. Africa is a country. 
in front of an Ethiopian who insisted that Africa is a continent. This and those puzzled people who meet African immigrants and wonder if they are hungry, thirsty, or are surprised slash impressed that they know what civilization is? It's interesting how many people think that all of sub-Saharan Africa is just collections of thatched hut filled with fly-covered, pot-bellied children and half-naked, floppy-breasted women. Maybe some guys with spears and bones in their noses standing off to the side. Show such people the skyline of Lagos or Nairobi and they'll be trying to figure out which state or European country they're looking at. Story 12. Why don't you live on disability? As a response to disabled people complaining about local governments cutting back programs designed for making gainful employment accessible. I work with disabled adults. This is a bigger problem than most people realize. And people don't realize that many government programs demand that you stay permanently in abject poverty. Get a part-time job? F you. No more health care. No more food. No more housing assistance. No more disability income. Accidentally save more than $2,000? F you too. And without that little bit of help, homeless and starving and totally effed and disabled. I've known a few folks on disability and the system for it is just as bad as these folks are saying. If you're on disability, which pays hardly enough to get by and try to make more, they cut off your disability. So if you get any kind of job, it better pay noticeably more than your disability payment. But you are on disability for a reason, so this magical job better also cater to that disability. It's absurd. Story 13. The company owes you nothing. You owe the company everything. My boss, after I worked for four years in the company. I used to work for a guy who owned a temporary employment agency. I once watched him berate his two $7 an hour receptionist because his monthly income from the business had dropped from $40,000 to $25,000 and they had nothing whatsoever to do with how much money the business made. They were effing receptionists. Temp agencies are the worst. They benefit the companies they work with and themselves. The employees get effed by both. I would laugh in my boss's face if she said that to me. I don't mean that in an I'm-so-edgy way, I just wouldn't be able to contain it. Story 14. Sort of tangential. Back in college, the entire class had a 10-minute argument with one student who didn't understand that not every country had citizenship by birth laws like the U.S. does. The professor held off jumping in for about five minutes to watch us explain it to her, but couldn't take it anymore and figured the student would finally believe it when she said it. Nope. She started arguing with the professor, too. The totally out of touch part came when she finally conceded with, well that's stupid, they should just do things the way we do them here. Wow, I wasn't aware of that. I also wouldn't argue with people telling me that though either. Very, very, very few countries equate birth with citizenship. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 15. I used to work for a minor aristocrat. Some advice he gave out in absolute sincerity over the years? Don't take out a mortgage, whatever you do. Terrible things. You'll end up paying a lot more for your house, you know. The thing about a Bentley is that you have to have a crap car, too. I mean, there are times when a Bentley just isn't appropriate and what you need is a crap car. Crap car later turned out to be an expensive Alfa Romeo and a Bentley to be several Bentleys. Recommending the Ritz in London as a place for regular after-work drinks. I don't know how anyone survives on their company salary alone. His salary was more than 300,000 pounds, US dollars 500,000, a year. I am absolutely shocked that so much of this out-of-touch advice is coming from rich people. I mean, who would have thought? They're clearly smart enough to get rich. Why wouldn't they have good advice? Story 16. My boss told me that the leasing of our company car is ending and I could buy it for really cheap if I want it. Really cheap meant 20,000 euros for him. He pays me 750 euros a month. I'm still in training, that's why it's so little. And I live on my own and have a car, so basically I'd have to work about two years for this really cheap car without spending a cent on anything. Man, this just pees me off so much. Like, I get that rich people simply have no idea what it's like to live on a limited income. But your boss literally pays you your wage. He knows exactly how much you make, so what? He can't do basic effing addition to realize this isn't cheap? F me, man, some people. Of course I'm aware of how little you make. I just assumed you were supplementing your income with your trust fund, like any ordinary person. Story 17. I was working at a school for the kids of the 1% and we were discussing what a millionaire was. 
One example I gave was owning property or assets worth a million or over, and the kid replied, Oh, so everyone is a millionaire then? Everyone, all of the classmates, maybe not the teacher. A relative of mine was a teacher at a high-end private school. When asked by her preschool kids what she'd do on her summer vacation, she said she'd catch up on some books, go see some movies, go to the park, etc. One of them asked, You don't go to your summer home? Story 18. When a guy on Am I the A-Hole was upset his wife was making him babysit their infant too much, so he and his mom told her there'd be no more going out. He said him going out all the time was different than her going out, and when asked for clarification, he said, because she's better at changing diapers and getting the baby to sleep. It truly blows my mind that there are morons out there who think taking care of their own child is babysitting. I had a guy at work complain to me that he couldn't go play golf that weekend because he had to babysit his kids. I said, you know, most people just call that being a father, right? Story 19. Gal Gadot and friends singing Imagine during the first few days of lockdown is up there. Imagine no possessions, said in their multi-million dollar mansions. Elton John made fun of John and Yoko for the song. John and Yoko were as bad as me when it came to shopping. The various apartments they owned in the Dakota in New York City were so full of priceless artworks, antiques, and clothes that once I sent them a card rewriting the lyrics to Imagine, Imagine six apartments. It isn't hard to do. One is full of fur coats. Another's full of shoes. I used to be an all-state choir back in high school. Now listen to me. Good lord. Story 20. If you're depressed, just go to Tullum and take a break. Vibe high. Like B, that is not how depression works. And yeah, I'll just leave all my responsibilities just for randomly deciding going to vacations. When I told her that's not the way how depression works, she said, You are just too pessimistic. Every time I feel depressed, I do this. I asked how she knew she was depressed, and she answered, Well, the last time I had depression was because I cried because my dad didn't want to take me to Paris for a year. I wanted to die in that moment. Story 21. External things don't affect your mental health. It's all about you. Seeing my girlfriend killed didn't affect me because it was an external thing. My PTSD is all me. I relate. However, it was my mother, not my girlfriend. I hope you found supportive people to surround yourself with. Otherwise, you'll never be able to heal. It took me my entire childhood until I moved out and finally started to see a difference. Much love for you. Story 22. We're human beings, and the sun is the sun. How can it be bad for you? I don't think anything that's natural can be bad for you. Gwyneth Paltrow, 2013. Let's say I get bitten by a rattlesnake. I shouldn't be worried. The venom's natural, isn't it? Just a note, she was saying this because she thought that the sun couldn't possibly be bad for you. Fifteen minutes of sun a day should be healthy for anyone. Pure radioactive sunlight. No SPF. I really kind of want a whole thread that is just bad advice from Gwyneth Paltrow. Then again, I'm not sure I have enough time to record a video that long. Story 23. That allowing ice fishing shacks would then give rise to prostitution. I live in a place where ice fishing is impossible and prostitution is legal. I don't understand how these two things could be linked. The mayor of Hudson, Ohio suggested that allowing people to build ice fishing shacks on Lake Erie would lead to prostitution. We don't understand how he got from ice fishing to prostitution either. Story 24. Had a friend in dental school who grew up in the rich suburbs north of Detroit. We were talking about traveling. She was going to Thailand for spring break, and she said, I'd be surprised if most people hadn't traveled to at least 20 countries. I told her I'd be surprised if most people had ever left the U.S. at all. Ah, to be rich enough to travel to at least 20 countries. I haven't even visited 20 states. Story 25. Had a millionaire tell me it was so great that even though we could all be making much more than we were at our nonprofit, we stayed for the kids because who needs money when your job is rewarding? Plot twist, he was a board member who controlled our salaries. I was barely making enough to scrape by. That sentiment is everywhere in nonprofits, sadly. Story 26. Who is your chocolatier? Okay, I need to know the context for this one if you'd care to share it. It was at an open house looking for a new property and two women were discussing their favorite restaurants. One asked this question and I remember that some people just live such different lives. That's some Tahani Al-Jamil level nonsense. Aw oh, yeah, getting the good place reference in here. 
You folks want some actual good advice? Go watch The Good Place. Maybe skim through the first half of season three, though. Just read a synopsis. Story 27. I've met many people that thought the U.S. government paid immigrants a boatload of money when they first moved to the U.S., and that's how they could afford to own convenience stores and stuff. It's literally the exact opposite. People spend an insane amount of money to get here. More often than not, it's almost everything they have. Story 28. I cannot understand why there are dumb people that do not wish to become more wealthy and just enroll in, insert generic top university. Referring to people that are content with their jobs and do not wish to change their career path for the sole sake of money and status. Also assuming, of course, everybody has money and time for that. Story 29. A woman told me that having to show her Costco membership card upon entering the building was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And she was dead serious. I was on day six of a migraine and would love to have the worst event of my life to have been showing a membership card. Story 30. Four of my millennial friends and I rented a house from a boomer some years ago. After signing the lease, boomer turns to us and asks why we aren't buying homes and flipping them like he does. This was before the mega boom in housing prices, and we explained that we wouldn't be renting if we had buying house money. Story 31. Recently got a new job that paid double what I used to make. When I resigned, my former boss told me, money isn't everything, lol. I was only making minimum wage before. As a friend once said, money can't buy happiness, but I find that it makes misery so much more comfortable. Hey boss, how about you lower your salary and pay me a little more, huh? I mean, money isn't everything, so you should be just fine. Hell, if you own the business, you must do it just for the love of it. Story 32. Aren't you a bit too old to have a grandma? A neighbor when I told her my grandma just passed away. Wish I could have seen her face if you'd said, well, as of yesterday, I guess I am. Yeah, about two days too old, as it turns out. Story 33. I was telling my boss how proud I was my husband got a new job, he's legally blind, and she proceeds to tell me that she wishes she had a disability so she could just get handed a job. Had to walk away from that one. I could arrange that, B. Story 34. You have no right to be upset. He didn't touch you. My mom said this to me one day after it was revealed my dad had been abusing my brothers. That's utterly horrible. What was the outcome for your family? Story 35. I wish we could make work from home possible for our business, but unfortunately we cannot. Said in a meeting over Zoom poolside while working from home. Story 36. Suggested someone take the bus to save on gas prices. They responded, Ew, do you know what kind of people take the bus? Yeah, working class people. And also me. I wish there was more money put into making better public transportation all around. I love taking the bus when I can, but in my suburb, it would add about an hour or so to most of the trips I take. Not quite worth it. Story 37. Someone I know sadly always brags about her 500000 flat, then tries to crowdfund for her cat's bills depending on where you live. That flat could be beautiful or a tiny hole. Story 38. My stepdad on why he is against gay marriage. I just don't understand how you can look at another man's A and think that's attractive. Well, Dave, you're not gay. Story 39. I don't want my taxes going to poor people who can't help themselves, said by a 14 whose parents were fairly wealthy. I'm pretty sure the 14-year-old was not paying taxes. Story 40. It's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? Here's some money. Go see a Star War. Those quotes sound so familiar, but I just can't remember from where. Come on! I think a woman said it, uh, could it be her? I swear, if people in the comments are like, how can you not know, then just, seriously? Story 41. Grandma slash mom called her two mixed great-grandkids two ends in the wood pile, and she wonders why they and my sis don't visit her. Story 42. The most unusual thing I heard from my friend is that he seriously thinks that menstruation doesn't exist. Story 43. Some guy at my work recently said he hopes Russia invades Canada so he can shoot some Russians. This is a 40 to 50 year old dude, by the way. Story 44. My mom once told me in the 60s, race didn't exist yet. Haven't really begun to unpack that one. Story 45. Get your effing A up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Kim Kardashian.
I avoided watching the Kardashians for the longest time. Somewhat recently, I had to watch a bunch of clips of that show, and holy crap, those people really are removed from reality. Like, frighteningly so. Story 46. Just buy a Tesla. Some idiots with a price increase on petrol and stuff. Story 47. Anyone calling themselves an entrepreneur while pitching an MLM. Story 48. If you can't afford gas, buy an electric vehicle. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.